the Mir space station will forever remain one of the greatest projects in the history of space exploration. It provided Russia with an almost uninterrupted human presence in space for 15 years. Mir's core module was launched by the Soviet Union on the 19th of February 1986 and was designed to replace the Salyut series of manned space stations. Thanks to its modular design, Mir was enlarged over time with the addition of new modules to form a space complex weighing almost 140 metric tons. The end of the Cold War gave the station a more international role, since out of the 103 astronauts who lived on it, 62 were from other countries around the world, including European countries, to carry out scientific experiments. The longest international mission, and also the last, was that of an ESA astronaut, Jean-Pierre Agnoré from France, who stayed aboard Mir for over six months. Not only was Mir a strong political symbol for the Soviet Union competing with the U.S. space shuttle program, but it also turned out to be very suitable for research in orbit, with hundreds of experiments being carried out in the fields of medicine, biology, botany and materials science. Mir has also been used as a platform for observing the universe and planet Earth. Although regularly maintained, the Mir space station has now reached the end of its operational life. Due to aging equipment, a whole range of technical problems and high maintenance costs, it's been decided to take it out of service. However, an object with a mass of 140 metric tons in orbit can't just be abandoned. Atmospheric friction would gradually lower its altitude and Mir would end up by re-entering the Earth's atmosphere in an uncontrolled manner before crashing somewhere onto the Earth. That's why the Russian authorities have decided to carry out a controlled de-orbit. Early in March 2001, a series of firings of the rocket motors of a Progress space vehicle docked with Mir will lower the station's altitude and at the same time make the orbit elliptical. Europe is an active participant in monitoring the deorbiting of Mir. ACER's operations center ESOC in Germany will serve as the central communication node between ZAP, the Russian control center, and ESA. The German Afghan radar will provide tracking data and radar images of Mir to ESOC and ZUP. ASOC will process its own data and data from ZUP, the USA and Afghan to follow the re-entry and make predictions. Using the data collected by ZUP and transmitted in real time to Toulouse, scientists at the French Space Agency's orbitography department will compute the trajectory and compare it with real mere re-entry data in order to make predictions on how things are going ahead. Two days after the start of operations, one last firing from the Soyuz spacecraft, by reducing Mir's speed, will send it down into the atmosphere. During this re-entry, the station will be subject to so much thermal and mechanical stress that it'll gradually break up and most of it will burn up in the atmosphere. Between 10 and 20% of the initial mass, however, should survive the fiery re-entry and reach the Earth's surface. The debris will be spread along a line several thousand kilometers long. That's why the Russians have chosen to carry out the re-entry above the South Pacific, in a region that will be banned to maritime traffic for the occasion. The debris should fall into the ocean without causing any damage. The demise of the Mir space station doesn't mean the end of permanently inhabited space stations. Since the 20th of November 1998, the integration in orbit of the International Space Station has been underway. Thanks, Taco, for... Since the 2nd of November 2000, a permanent crew of three astronauts lives and works on the station, including at least one Russian cosmonaut. The first laboratory module, Destiny, has been docked so that scientific experiments are due to begin soon. It was on the basis of this achievement that the Russian authorities gave the go-ahead for the end of a tremendous 15-year adventure. <laughs>